Well, we stay in KwaZulu-Natal, and the reason we're focusing this morning our spotlight on the ongoing political killings is because there's been more such violence. An ANC member and community development was shot dead in Umzim Kulu's Herikwala region on Saturday. It's believed the attackers entered the victim's home and shot him in front of his wife and children. ENCA's Pamandla Gok has been tracking these developments for us. He's joining us now once again. Spamandla, good morning. Yeah, not a, a good Monday, I guess, for the family of the of the people who've been uh, who've been attacked, especially in this latest uh, uh, killing. Indeed, well, the family of Nkos Kona Matragama is distraught. We are inside the family's home now, or we are inside the home where he was shot and killed on Saturday night. He was busy fixing a light bulb behind me on the veranda. When three assailants entered the home, they went to his children. They asked the children, where is your father? We need to speak to him. And then the children pointed out that he was busy fixing a light bulb. They came behind me and they shot him execution style and then they fled the scene but of course he is not the only member of a political party to be killed in this region of Herikwala especially in Umzimkulu a high profile killing is that of uh, former ANC Youth League Secretary General Cindy So Makaka earlier on we did a live crossing where Makaka was killed at EBC now we are about 20 minutes away from where Cindy So Makaka was killed this is where Mkhagana was killed on Saturday night. His family says they are not sure at the moment as to what could be the motive because he was no longer active in politics. At some point he was the branch secretary of the ANC in Ward 12. But right now we are joined by his son who will share with us what happened on Saturday. Of course the son's name is Kanye Somakagana. Baba, thank you very much for your time. Maustale Luguti Ninanjenge family, Nizwe Ningom Kribelo Gwenze Gendon. Tell Okay. three men entered this yard. What actually happened when they entered the yard? Babengena baba bangenile bafike babuze inganini ukuthi ngaba singamthulaka ke ngosikhona. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, basically, the son is telling us that his father was busy fixing the light bulb behind me, as we have already indicated. Three assailants entered the yard, and they asked for him from his children. Then they shot him. According to the son, it was a premeditated murder. It was well planned. They knew who they were looking for, and they did specify why they were looking for the father. But right now, we are also joined by the brother, Utata Umtutuzeli Kweshube. Baba Utiwena ni family nifuna umteto udlale indawo yawo masiqalela wake wanjela u brother wakho ukuthi unengxaki kukho abantu who would want to kill him Ne ngaba njwa manga nangelinye ilanga etsho ukuthi nabantu angakufani naba sebenza nabo kambe umuntu ongafani naye kambe inkampani ancinisene naye abasebenzana naye angakufani naye bangazathi sitsho ekhlale politician before do you think is related to politics 
Okay. Right now in South Africa there seems to be a problem a problem, particularly in Wazul Natal, where killers of politicians benga bo chwani family ni tininga leonto liko ni tembi ndo bana ama police would work hard to get ama killers of your brother. Minangu wam ama police kambo umted of sebes and pela 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 pela. Hangen se gindo epsung nebi iswe. Okay. Am a funeral arrangements be say do a potu Okay. Well, that's the brother of the deceased. Basically, he's saying at the moment they are not sure. It's unclear what the motive could have been for the murder of his brother. He says at some point he was active in politics, but he was no longer active except that he was working for the community as a community development worker. He urges law enforcement agencies, particularly the police, to work hard to bring the killers of his brother to book because he says in most cases those who kill politicians in Guazulu Natal are not arrested arrested and sentenced there are no convictions so he's saying they would want to see law enforcement agencies working hard to bring the perpetrators to book of course there is a general concern in Guazul Natal what he has just said is not a new thing even the police minister Peggy Kale did raise that issue as a result there was that interministerial meeting including the Department of Defense, State Security, Police, as well as the Department of Justice. President Cyril Ramaphosa himself did raise that issue that there are no convictions of people who kill politicians in South Africa and in Wazul Natal in particular. Now, Spamanja, the issue I want to ask is that uh, when you spoke to the son there, uh, he was outside the home and he was called by other youngsters to go home quickly. And uh, you said as well, they said that uh, when these attackers arrived, they asked the people who were around at home, where is your father? Besides the children, are there any other people from your knowledge who witnessed this? I'm asking this because from the Muerane Commission that we've had and from that interministerial committee we had, Nosivu Mapisa Nagula last week, saying that one of the biggest challenges in investigating the political killing in KZN is the question of intimidation of witnesses. Indeed, there were some people inside the house when the attackers came in, except for the children. But of course, like you have just said, I remember very well, some people have said openly that they are scared to come forward because of the issue of witness protection. They say if you come up and you become a witness, then you are also targeted, you are gunned down. So People in Guazulu Natal or in these regions where politicians have been killed, they are really scared. Even some family members here, there were some aunts who were here when the deceased was attacked. Of course, they are saying they are scared. They don't know what will happen. Maybe the attackers will come back to finish them off as potential witnesses. So it is really a concern, not only for people who are family members, but also neighbors as a whole in this area. They are saying, look, we do not know what happened we might have seen the suspect or there might be people who could have seen the suspects but now we are scared to come forward because you don't know what will happen to you they are saying really that needs to be addressed they do not feel safe even those who might be willing to come forward with information but they would decide to hold back for their safety okay thank you